So without further ado, on this, the five year anniversary of the Ice Bucket Challenge, hard to believe, um, I'd like to uh, bring up and present an award to uh, Nancy Freitas. Thank you so much. Um, Liza's got her stopwatch going. <laughs> um, so first of all, I want to thank, um, first of all, everyone for being here, and especially um, Sarah and Bill, Mark, Liza, and the rest of the ALS Georgia organization um, for actually bringing me down to Boston, where it's actually hotter there today than it is here in Atlanta. <laughs> So um, we've had a, a, a lot of uh, very hot weather there. Well, this award um, is, I'm so honored and I'm so grateful, but it's not about me. As um, Bill said, in March of 2012, I sat in a room where I thought my son had a pinched nerve. You see, my son was a Division I athlete playing in the ACC baseball. Um, at Boston College, and then went and played professionally over in Europe. Came home, got a job, got a life, got a girlfriend, got an apartment, and was doing exactly what 27-year-olds are supposed to be doing. And then, on that fateful morning, we were that family. We were the family that life changed in one minute, in one second. We were told Pete had ALS. And just like Bruce said, we, we didn't know what ALS was. I always talk about that moment because I call it your knowledge Rolodex, right? When someone says something out of the, out of the clear blue sky that you can't even have in your, your comprehension. And I remember thinking I knew two things about ALS. The first thing I knew was that it was bad. I think we all kind of knew that. We all kind of knew ALS was bad, but God knows we didn't know what the context of bad was. And the second thing, we were a baseball family. We knew Lou Gehrig. And we knew, knew Lou Gehrig at the time was about 73 years ago. So of course, 73 years. There's been progress. We have a thing called the internet. I unfortunately um, was a cancer patient in the 70s. We have done so many things in the world of cancer. So doctor, he has ALS, what do we do now? And then the second shoe dropped. No treatment, no cure. Two to five years to live. 100% fatal and your motor neurons will die during the progression of this disease. So we left. And six hours after, I stand before you today because of a 27-year-old ALS patient who looked at his family and said, this is unacceptable. We're going to get to work. We're going to change the trajectory of this disease. And I'm going to show people what this disease does on a day-to-day -day basis. You see, Pete was an early adopter of social media. Back in the early 2000s, he was at a school in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, where a guy down the street at Harvard named Mark Zuckerberg was creating a thing called Facebook. And as you remember, the history of Facebook was that it was for Boston College boys to meet girls. So he was an early adopter to social media. <laughs> Believe me, anything that could have helped in that realm, he was on top of. So he knew that he had been chosen to have this disease, and he knew the vehicle by which he was going to show people exactly what this disease did on a day-to-day -day basis. And he knew he had that form because he had been a big athlete in Boston. He actually played in the Beanpot Tournament at Fenway Park where he hit a home run. He's a Boston boy and he was going to call on Boston to help him and he did. So for two and a half years after Pete was diagnosed, we marketed a disease. 
We marketed the disease ALS. And I think one of the biggest pieces that Pete did was that he educated a whole new demographic to this disease. He was 27. Lou, Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS, I think everybody thought was your father or your grandfather's disease. So we mobilized that demographic. And on August 1st, 2014, when his friend Pat Quinn in Yonkers, New York, sent him the ice bucket challenge, he looked at us, once again, our family, and said, this is it. And he didn't say it. He didn't verbalize it to us. He typed it. Because during that two and a half years, Pete had lost the ability to walk, to talk, to swallow, to eat. And he was typing on his Toby, this is it. It is our time. And then we furiously worked and took that whole demographic and pushed it right out to them. And I think most of you in this room know what happened. So the next slide, I'm not sure how we're advancing. OK. So I, when, I, when I give talks, I, I love doing this. These are some of the historic facts of, of the Ice Bucket Challenge, which if you don't know, I think you'll have a lot of fun with. So the Facebook executives uh, pulled the families in to tell us exactly what happened during Ice Bucket. And what they told us is that there were 17 million ALS Ice Bucket Challenge videos viewed by 440 million unique viewers over 10 billion times. They told us that the two biggest days on Facebook for activity, and now I was shocked when I heard these two days, is the Oscars and the Super Bowl. During the middle of August of 2014, the activity that was generated by the ALS IBC was as big as those two days combined times five times. We almost broke the Facebook server. <laughs> Twitter, we own the number six hashtag for social good in Twitter's history. Ice Bucket Challenge. And on the bottom is YouTube. Over 150 countries did the Ice Bucket Challenge. Now, does anybody know how many countries there are? Stephen, who said that? Yay, 196. That's the first time anybody has ever answered that question. <laughs> Wow, in five years, congratulations. Because I didn't know how many countries they were, and when I heard it was 150, I was like, oh, is that good or not good? And I had to find out what percentage of countries. But those of us in this room, we're gonna get the other 46 next time. So what I say to people all the time is you opened your hearts to us, right? You opened your hearts to the ALS community. And a lot of people just wanted to say it was people pouring, making funny videos, pouring ice water over their heads. But guess what? People opened up their minds. In the middle there is Wikipedia and Google search from 2014. The Wikipedia page from January 1st to July 31st, 2014, averaged about 163 hits. During the month of 2014, August, there were three million hits on the ALS page. And on the right, Google search terms for 2014. What is ALS was the number one search term in all of 2014. Now let's put it into context. The Ice Bucket Challenge didn't start until August 1st. Every other subject had a seven month running start. And we were still the most searched term. So you opened your hearts, you opened your minds, and then people opened their wallets. A quarter of a billion dollars raised by the International Alliance 
for ALS. Now, that's a whole lot of money, and it's been five years. So let's talk about the most important thing. Next picture. What did we do with it? So I'm going to give you some talking points. So when you leave this room and you're talking to people about ALS, and you know they poured ice water over their head, because most people, everybody did, um, you can throw this at them. So the ALS Association has granted and committed $89 million to research from Ice Bucket Challenge funds. We, we sent a survey out to the scientists who received those grants, and we asked them, what has been that impact of that money? And one of the most amazing things is that they wrote back to us, because of course in the world of research, it's all about matching funds. You have to go out and get money before we'll give you money. They have leveraged that 89 million to raise another 100 million dollars. So that 89 million is truly 189 million infused into research. Before Ice Bucket, we had one gene associated with ALS, SOD1. One gene in 150 years. In the last five years, Project MINE, which was mentioned, has been one of the global collaborations that Emory is part of, and so is not UMass. Got to throw Boston in there, little shout out. Um, and uh, they found the NEK1 gene. We have found five more genes since Ice Bucket in the last five years. One of the most remarkable things is that up in Boston at Mass General, we have opened up the Healy Center for ALS. A CEO of a Fortune 500 company who lives in Boston has been diagnosed with ALS. And he and his company has given Mass General $40 million to open up this, this um, ALS center. And what's going to happen in AL, that ALS center, it's going to be a new approach to clinical trials so that we can get those 80 plus new drugs and therapy that are in the pipeline from the lab to the patient as quickly as possible, being headed by Dr. Merit Sakovich. So we've done a lot in the last five years, but there's so much more to do. Can you send the next slide? So I want to give you an update on my family since uh, Ice Bucket and where we are now. Most important person is Pete. As you saw in the, in the video with Pat Quinn, our Pete is still with us. He will have hit the eight year anniversary in March. Uh, today, unfortunately, he's in the hospital, but he's doing much better. Um, as we all know, um, pneumonia and septis is something that um, they tend to fight quite a lot. And we just got the call that hopefully Pete's gonna be home with us um, on Monday. Um, I'm happy to introduce um, my husband, John, who's here today with me, and our granddaughter, Adeline. What Addie is a representation of is Addie's mom, my daughter, Jennifer, told us that she was expecting Addie, our first granddaughter, three days before Pete was diagnosed with ALS. She is the highest of the joy that you can possibly imagine. And three days later, we were hit with the devastation you would never think. Now, Addie has a sister and a brother, but I want to talk about the relationships of a family in this disease. Because if there's anything when you look at, at me, you can't think of me without my family, because it's been the most important piece of this story. You see, my daughter Jen and her husband the night Pete was diagnosed, came home from their jobs on Wall Street, both of them working really hard for 10 years to reach the levels that they were at. My daughter retired from Goldman Sachs, and my son-in-law continued to commute, and they built a house a mile away from us, where they now live. 
so they're always with us. Bruce, you, you moved my heart when you talked about your brother Ray, because Pete has a younger brother, Andrew, and my Andrew loves his Pete so much. He is his role model, he is his best friend, he is his teammate. And the night of diagnosis, Pete, Andrew had just graduated college and was in his first job, living in his first apartment. And Andrew broke his lease, moved back into his bedroom upstairs, quit his job, and he was Pete's full-time caregiver until we had to get skilled nursing. So there's nothing like a brotherly love. And Pete married his girlfriend, Julie, on June 1st of 2013. And on August 31st, 2014, as the exclamation point for the Miraculous Ice Bucket Challenge, Pete and Julie had Lucy Frades, who will be five on August 31st, Addie's cousin. <laughs> so our family, someone said to me last week that, you know, Pete's still alive. And I said to them, yeah, you could say it that way, but I choose to say it that Pete is living. You know, that's what's happening now, is that we have a mind, new mindset in this community. No longer are people dying from ALS. My son Pete is a person living with ALS. And I think that that is what we all need to embrace is living with ALS. And the last thing I wanna leave you with today is everything, and that's hope. We are now included. We are now heard of. We are now, as Pete calls us, the cool disease no pun intended. So I have three things that I would like to leave you with, and I would really like to ask you. So the first thing is you have a rock star chapter here in Georgia. Sarah runs an amazing staff. Bill and the board of directors are of the top notch and top quality. Part of what I do is I go around and I get to talk to all the individual chapters. And unfortunately, we're working really hard to have everybody on an equal standing, but it's not. And I'm here to tell you that this chapter services the people of Georgia and the ALS community at the highest of levels. So my first ask is to stay with this chapter, support this staff, in any way that you possibly can. Support the ALS patients of Georgia in any way that you can. The second thing is go out and talk about ALS. Educate people. Education is what the Ice Bucket Challenge was all about. I don't know about you, but I believe that people learned about what this disease was and is, and we're horrified, just like we all were. And I think the more that we go out and be ambassadors, those of us that are in this community, we're gonna maybe not strike lightning in a bottle again like we did, because I don't think that's ever gonna happen again, but we can build on that momentum. And the third ask is, when your ice bucket challenge pops up on your memories on social media, reshare it. Reshare it. Can you imagine if those 17 million videos all got reshared again? Now, will we raise a quarter of a billion dollars? We can all pray and hope so. But we'll keep it top of mind. And to have this disease be top of mind accomplishes so many things. Number one, in the five years, there are a lot of people who have lost their patient that were here for Ice Bucket. But more importantly, or just as importantly, are the newly diagnosed. 
The people who have come in, who poured water over, I have met so many people who poured water over their head, gave to the ALS cause, and then were diagnosed two years later. So our, our, we have a very fluid community, and if we keep up the education and keep people involved with us, that hope will live and will build. So my third ask is share. Share those ice bucket challenges. And now, there's a really easy thing. It's called the donate button. And oh yeah, guess what? Guess where the donate button came from? When we were in that meeting with the Facebook executives, they said, you know, we were thinking about the money that you raised and how you raised it with people like pouring water and then they had to go to the internet and find out where to give and then they had to take, you know, in the world of philanthropy, that's like over the top, how, how you raise that money. So we are writing an algorithm right now for a thing called the donate button. We're all still waiting for the royalties from that, but you know, I don't know if we'll ever get it, but they, that is a direct relationship back to the Ice Bucket Challenge. So share your videos, add the donate button to the Georgia chapter, to the ALS Association, where, wherever you, you feel that your money will be best served. But I would suggest for your chapter right here that you raise money because we know the power of social media and giving with one, five, ten dollars. You can raise, you can raise a hundred thousand dollars in five minutes. So what I would like to end with is a little analogy that I like to use. The day that my son was diagnosed with ALS, we left that room with hopelessness. We weren't even told to go to a pharmacy. We weren't even told to bring him back to see the doctor for three months. And I remember being totally appalled by that. It still kind of drives me like crazy. Like you just told me he has two to five years to live, but you don't want to see him for three months? Mrs. Frades, there's nothing we can do. Today, there's an option. It's called Radicaba. Now, does it work? Does it not work? I'm not here to say. As we all know, we have a very challenging disease. But instead of don't come back for three months, the FDA fast-tracked this drug and therapy. And today, if you're diagnosed with ALS, ALS, there is something. And I'm here to tell you that there's going to be a lot more coming. In 2012, we didn't even know where the tunnel to a treatment or cure was. Today, not only are we in the tunnel, we can see the light at the end of it. You're going to be seeing ALS in clinical trials coming up in the next couple of years with treatments and therapies that hopefully are going to be the end of this disease. So go out, spread the good word, spread the good news, because hope is alive in this community, and we're going to get to the light at the end of it. I'm honored to be here. I am honored to be a part of this community. I give you my word that my family will continue to fight as long as it takes alongside the Lucias and every other family in here, because we are all family, and together we'll achieve the ultimate dream that we all go to bed with every night. Thank you, Atlanta, and best wishes. Thank you.